Hey, greetings. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I want to talk about when you should be replacing your vacuum cleaner. A lot of people keep using a vacuum cleaner that's broken and sometimes beyond repair. So I wanted to talk about where that point is where you should dispose of it and get a new one versus fixing it and keeping what you have. So the first sign that your vacuum cleaner needs to be replaced is if it's a disposable vacuum brand. These machines are not meant for prolonged use in a house. They're really meant for temporary use. You can get by maybe one or two years in an apartment, but these are really designed and sold as the concept of being e-waste. Some of these brands include Shark, Dirt Devil, Bissell. These machines are really meant to be thrown out when you're done like a disposable pen or cigarette lighter. You can see how this has a broken housing assembly. This is toast. And this was not an inexpensive machine. This was Bissell's attempt at making the best thing they could at the time. It was sold with a five-year warranty. Uh, but this is completely toast. Parts aren't available. Even if they were, it would not be worth fixing. Again, this is a quality problem that's part of its design. Yep, so this shark has died, and you can see the roller is seized in here, and these cleaner heads are supposed to be changed as a whole assembly. Like so, so you can get this from shark, but it's over half the cost of a new one, so not worth replacing. And here are some further pictures after the autopsy. You can see where the roller just got melted. This machine was almost exactly a year old. So how to check if your shark has passed its expiration date? Shark, for whatever reason, puts the date code on the cord. This one here is, well, was that a 1 6? So that's past its expiration date. The 521, it's just over a year old. It's out of warranty. It's time to get rid of that one as well. Hopefully, this will help you decide whether or not you should repair yours or get a new vacuum cleaner. Now, the second reason you might not fix your machine, as discussed earlier with some of the e waste brands, that never had parts available, only had certain parts available. Uh, but even some of the better brands do discontinue parts over time. So as a machine gets out of its service life, it's time to replace it. Now I have here on the bench a Hoover wind tunnel. The selector knob that controls the brush roller is broken and the self-propel lever is broken here. And this machine, well, was designed two decades ago. This machine's a little bit newer than that. I think we dated it to 2012 maybe. Almost exactly a decade old now, but the design again is older. So the service life of this machine has gone. And in this case, Hoover has changed hands. So the parts are not available for this machine, even though these were decent performers. And I have a full like 40 minute long review on this machine. It's just not worth fixing. The parts are not widely available. You can still find some new old stock, but again, not worth it for you as the consumer. It should be replaced when parts are no longer available. That's a big hint. So definitely replace your vacuum if parts are no longer available and it's over a decade old. However, some machines like Shark, Bissell, Dirt Devil, the disposable vacuum brands, those machines again are intended as e-waste so the parts were never available to be fair to those machines. Don't expect those things to last a decade. Another example of when it's time to replace your vacuum, if your machine has outlived its intended service life. Some machines like Dyson have about a 500 working hour service life. Some machines it's 1,000, 1,500, or even 2,000, like on some of the better brands. But once they've lived, outlived their intended service life and they're out of warranty, it's probably time to replace them. And I guess that brings me to my next point. Once high-end machines are out of warranty, you're rolling the dice with the age, whether or not it should be repaired, even if parts are fixed. Is it worth repairing a machine that's 10 years old, but you know in a year or two you're going to have to then put that same amount of money into? I think the answer is obviously no, but again, it's machine by machine basis. I just want to give you some examples. And these are just visual representations of machines. They're not necessarily the end all or be all, whether it should be replaced or not. I think this Dyson DC50 is probably the pinnacle of the example. Why the motor runs on this machine, the brush roller has completely shit its brushes, as they all do. Its filters are bad. And it's at the point where the Cyclone is plugged up enough that it needs a service. So the total cost of this machine is gonna be maybe $250, $300 worth of repair. Well, as you know, you can replace a Dyson 
for under $500. So again, it's not worth doing. So here's an example of how the Mighty have fallen. Why this was a high-end machine at its time, and it was a very good performer. It is high maintenance. We've, we've seen a lot of these, they have to be serviced regularly, sometimes yearly. And what we've seen is that the springs have broken at this point on the machine. These are available and these can be fixed. The total cost of the repair of this machine is half the cost, or a little bit over that, of replacing it with something like a SIBO dart. So that's the other thing when you're looking whether your machine should be replaced, you want to look at the market as a whole. If you're able to get a similar machine for less money than you originally paid, that's something to think about. As I've said before, a lot of the legacy recar and simplicity products really aren't worth keeping out of their warranty, particularly the tandem air machines that do require service once a year. So if you are tired of paying that service fee, I wouldn't hesitate to replace this with something a little bit more modern. Unfortunately, these machines are usually just not worth the cost of keeping running out of warranty. The next reason you might replace your vacuum is if it's one of the outdated bagless designs. Now bagless has its place back in the day when bags weren't quite as developed, they were trying to find something better. Well, that time has come and gone over a decade ago. So why you wanna run a bagless cleaner where you're having to replace filters as often as you're replacing vacuum bags doesn't financially make much sense. And then on top of that, bagless vacuums require you to go outside to empty them. So they are a hassle on top of being the same price, if not more expensive than a bagged vacuum. So that's a good reason to replace it is if you have allergies and you're dealing with an outdated bagless system. I'm going to show you where some of the filters that should be replaced regularly can be on a vacuum. You know, a lot of vacuum cleaners would hide them back in the day. The newer ones are a little bit better, but they still hide them on a lot of bagless cleaners. So let's, uh, let's open this up. I'll show you where some of these are. And again, a lot of these companies will claim things that are false, like a lifetime filter. We can see where this filter is full of pet hair and has been blowing the pet hair out the side of the filter on this machine. Again, if you had allergies, that could be a problem. I have here a Bissell. And even though this one's clearly marked filter, you still see that the filter has really never been maintenanced. Again, another clear marking on this one. Yeah, that needs to be changed. Again, the lifespan of these filters is going to depend on use. But a lot of times, about every three to six months, some of these HEPA filters have to be replaced. Some of them, like the Dysons, will last up to about a year. The newer Dysons are a little bit better, but still, you're replacing these things, washing them out constantly. I don't see any reason in 2022, going into 2023, why you'd want to touch the dirt in your vacuum when it's just not necessary anymore. All right, folks, I hope this video has been informative and has helped you decide whether or not you should replace your vacuum. Now, if you want to know my recommended vacuums, I'm going to put a playlist here at the end of my recommended vacuums. There's also a great list over on the Vacuum Cleaner subreddit of vacuums you should look at. If you have any other questions, let's put them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them for the first 24, 48 hours of this video. Have yourself a wonderful day. And remember folks, disposable vacuums belong in the trash can. So put them where they belong.